Section number 14 of The Haunted Hour, an anthology by Margaret Widemer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Matt Penzing of Oxford, Ohio. Haunted Places, Part 1. The Listeners by Walter de la Mer. Is anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor, and a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveller's head, and he smote upon the door again the second time. "'Is there anybody there?' he said. But no one descended to the traveller, no head from the leafed-fringed sill, leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still, but only the host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call and he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness, answering his cry, while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky, for he suddenly smote upon the door even louder and lifted his head. "'Tell them I came and no one answered, that I kept my word,' he said. Never the least stir made the listeners though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Ay, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hooves were gone. Haunted Houses by Henry W. Longfellow all houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors the harmless phantoms on their errands glide, with feet that make no sound upon the floors. We meet them at the doorway, on the stair, along the passages they come and go, impalpable impressions on the air, a sense of something moving to and fro. There are more guests at table than the hosts invited. The illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts, as silent as the pictures on the wall. The stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see, or hear the sounds I hear. He but perceives what is, while unto me all that has been is visible and clear. We have no title deeds to house or lands. Owners and occupants of earlier dates from graves forgotten stretch their hands and hold in Mortmain still their old estates. The spirit world, around this world of sense, floats like an atmosphere, and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense a vital breath of more ethereal air. Our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires, the struggle of the instinct that enjoys, and the more noble instinct that aspires. These perturbations, this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high, come from the influence of an unseen star, an undiscovered planet in our sky. And as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws o'er the sea a floating bridge of light, across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into this realm of mystery and night, so from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light connecting it with this o'er whose unsteady floor that sways and bends wander our thoughts above the dark abyss the beleaguered city by henry wadsworth longfellow i have read in some old marvellous tale some legend strange and vague that a midnight host of spectres pale beleaguered the walls of prague Beside the Moldau's rushing stream with the wan moon overhead, there stood as in an awful dream the army of the dead. White as a sea-fog, landward bound, the spectral band was seen, 
and with a sorrowful deep sound the river flowed between no other voice nor sound was there no drum nor sentry's pace the mist-like banners clasped the air as clouds with clouds embrace and when the old cathedral bell proclaimed the morning prayer the white pavilions rose and fell on the alarmed air down the broad valley fast and far the troubled army fled up rose the glorious morning star the ghastly host was dead i have read in the marvellous heart of man that strange and mystic scroll that an army of phantoms vast and wan beleaguer the human soul encamped beside life's rushing stream in fancy's misty light gigantic shapes and shadows gleam portentous through the night upon its midnight battleground the spectral camp is seen and with a sorrowful deep sound flows the river of life between no other voice nor sound is there in the army of the grave no other challenge breaks the air but the rushing of life's wave and then the solemn and deep church bell entreats the soul to pray the midnight phantoms feel the spell the shadows sweep away down the broad vale of tears afar the spectral camp is fled faith shineth as a morning star our ghastly fears are dead a newport romance by brett hart they say that she died of a broken heart i tell the tale as twas told to me but her spirit lives and her soul is part of this sad old house by the sea her lover was fickle and fine and french it was more than a hundred years ago when he sailed away from her arms poor wench with the admiral rochambeau i marvel at what periwigged phrase won the heart of this sentimental quaker at what gold-laced speech of those modish days she listened the mischief taker but she kept the posies of mionette that he gave and ever as their bloom failed and faded though with her tears still wet her youth with her own exhaled till one night when the sea fog wrapped a shroud round spar and spire and tarn and tree her soul went up on that lifted cloud from this sad old house by the sea and ever since then when the clock strikes two she walks unbidden from room to room and the air is filled as she passes through with a subtle sad perfume the delicate odor of mionette the ghost of a dead and gone bouquet is all that tells her story yet could she think of a sweeter way i sit in the sad old house to-night myself a ghost from a farther sea and i trust that this quaker woman might in courtesy visit me for the laugh is fled from the porch and lawn and the bugle died from the fort on the hill and the twitter of girls on the stairs is gone and the grand piano is still somewhere in the darkness a clock strikes two and there is no sound in the sad old house but the long veranda dripping with dew and in the wainscot a mouse the light of my study lamp streams out from the library door but has gone astray in the depths of the darkened hall small doubt but the quakeress knows the way was it the trick of a sense or rot with outward watching and inward fret but i swear that the air just now was fraught with the odor of mionette i open the window and seem almost so still lies the ocean to hear the beat of its great gulf artery off the coast and to bask in its tropic heat in my neighbor's window the gaslights flare as the dancers swing in a waltz from strauss and i wonder now could i fit that air to the song of this sad old house and no odor of mionette there is but the breath of morn on the dewy lawn and maybe from causes as slight as this the quaint old legend was born but the soul of that subtle sad perfume as the spiced embalmings they say outlast the mummy laid in his rocky tomb awakens my buried past and i think of the passion that shook my youth of its aimless loves and its idle pains and am thankful now for the certain truth that only the sweet remains and i hear no rustle of stiff brocade and i see no face at my library door 
for now that the ghosts of my heart are laid she is viewless forevermore but whether she came as a faint perfume or whether a spirit in a stole of white i feel as i pass from the darkened room she has been with my soul tonight a legend by may kendall ay an old story yet it might have truth in it who knows of the heroine's breaking down one night just ere the curtain rose and suddenly when fear and doubt had shaken every heart there stepped an unknown actress out to take the heroine's part but oh the magic of her face and oh the songs she sung and oh the rapture of the place and oh the flowers they flung but she never stooped they lay all night as when she turned away and left them and the saddest light shone in her eyes of gray she gave a smile in glancing round and sighed one fancied then but never they knew where she was bound or saw her face again but the old prompter gray and frail they heard him murmur low it could only be meg coverdale died thirty years ago in that old part who took the town and she was fair as fair as when they shut the coffin down on that gleam of her golden hair and it wasn't hard to understand how a lass as fair as she could never rest in the promised land where none but angels be end of section number fourteen